What's up everyone, I'm Nikhil from Greedy Tech and in this video I'll be unboxing the Samsung Galaxy M10. Now this is the latest and greatest phone from Samsung under 10,000 rupees, which is definitely the best phone launched by Samsung in the past couple of years. So there are a lot of cool things going on with this phone like a dual camera setup with an ultra wide camera, which is the first time for Samsung under 10,000 rupees. It obviously supports dual SIM with dual LTE and most importantly it comes with the Infinity V display. That's a display with a water drop notch. So because of that we get 90% screen to body ratio and the phone, especially the display looks really awesome. By the way, this is also the cheapest phone in the Indian market to come with a water drop notch or the Infinity V display under 10,000 rupees. Now all this talk might seem like over exaggeration, but for a Samsung phone to offer all this up under 10,000 rupees is like an impossible dream come true. Okay, I think I've already talked too much. I think you're already bored. So without any further delays, let's just get on with the unboxing. Now this is the box and it simply says M10 with a quick preview of how the phone looks. Because of this particular wallpaper, we really can't see the notch on this phone. But it truly really has a pretty massive display. So on the front it simply says M10 and on the back we have some highlighting features like the Infinity V displays, camera specifications and so on, which we'll be talking in a minute. It even says made for India and Duos. It means it supports dual SIM. Now let's get on with the unboxing. Now this one is sold exclusively on Amazon.n in two variants. Base variant is priced at 8,000 rupees for 2 gigabytes of RAM and 16 gigabytes of storage. And the next variant is priced at 9,000 rupees for 3 gigabytes of RAM and 32 gigabytes of storage. It's available in two colors, ocean blue and charcoal now, black. And we have the charcoal black color. So now that the box is open, at the top we have a small cardboard box with some documentation, just like the Samsung M20. So we have a quick start guide, regional log guide and warranty card information. So let me just put that aside. Following that we have the phone itself. So let me just put this aside as well. Next we have a 5 watts power adapter. So I was at least expecting a 10 watts power adapter but considering it's Samsung, it knows how to disappoint somewhere. So it's a 5 watts power adapter, charging will be slower but we can manage with it. Now going on next we have the micro USB charging cable. Yes, this phone has a micro USB port, there is no Type-C on this phone. We get USB Type-C port and fast charging on the M20, while on this phone it's a regular micro USB charging port and no fast charging support. Now the last thing inside the box would be the SIM card ejector that's at the center. So these are all the contents of the box, as usual we don't get the earphones and we didn't even get a screen guard. That's something I would really appreciate. Now coming back to the phone, this is how the phone looks, it's in a plastic wrapping. Let me just remove that. We have another sticker for IME numbers. So this is how the phone looks on the back and this is how it looks on the front. Pretty much a blank slate. Now let's have a quick physical overview and then check out the specs. On the back this phone has a plastic back panel with a super mirror finish. It's not glass, it's not fiberglass, it's just regular plain old plastic with a mirror finish. It's kind of smooth and looks kind of okay. Not premium, not cheap. Looks and feels good. Now at the top it has a dual camera setup with a 13 megapixel primary camera with f1.9 aperture. Now that's followed by a 5 megapixel secondary camera with 120 degree field of view. Now this dual camera setup is followed by a single LED flash and Samsung branding at the center. And at the bottom we have the mono speaker along with some specifications. On the front, it has a massive 6.22 inch Infinity V display with HD plus resolution in the new 19 is to 9 aspect ratio with 90% screen to body ratio. Display just looks pretty awesome. Now above the display inside the notch, we have the 5 megapixel front facing camera along with some basic sensors and above the camera, it has the earpiece. Now coming to the sides, at the bottom, it has a 3.5mm audio jack followed by the micro USB charging port and the primary microphone. At the top, it has just a secondary microphone for noise cancellation. On the right side, it has a power and volume buttons made of plastic, they are sufficiently elevated and have a nice clicky feel to them. On the left side, it has just the SIM card tray housing two nano SIM slots along with a dedicated SD card slot, just like the Samsung M20. Now coming to the rest of the specifications, under the hood, this phone sports an Exynos 7870 processor with Mali T830 MP1 GPU, running a skinned version of Android called Samsung Experience UI version 9.5 based on Android 8.1 Oreo. Now powering all this is a 3400mAh battery. Now with all these goodies, this phone has a thickness of 7.7mm and weighs just 163 grams. In hand, phone doesn't feel all that heavy. 
It has a slight bit of weight to it, but it's manageable and you can use this phone single-handedly if you have bigger hands. So overall, in terms of design and build, it looks pretty good, especially for the price and all the features it offers, especially that Infinity V display. Now let me turn on the phone and see what we get right out of the box. So that's Samsung Galaxy M10, first boot, and here we go. Now this phone doesn't have a fingerprint scanner, so we have to use the face unlock feature. That's the only convenient way to unlock the phone apart from using the password. Now it's done. So guys, this is how the phone looks once we turn it on. This is the default launcher and this is the app draw. We can swipe up or down for app draw and there is no big speed right out of the box, at least on the M10. Now this is the notification area. These are the notification toggles. Now let's go to settings and let's check out the storage variant. This is the 2GB and 16GB variants. So out of that 2GB of RAM, we get about 791MB of free RAM. And out of that 16GB of space, we get about 9.2GB of space for user apps and user data. So this is the base variant of Samsung Galaxy M10 and 9GB should be sufficient for an entry level user. But if you are not an entry level user, I will definitely suggest you to get the 3GB RAM variant. Now with that said, let's just go to software section. So this is the about page and this phone is running Samsung Experience version 9.5 based on Android version 8.1.0 that's still on Android Oreo and it has the January security patch just like the Samsung Galaxy M20. So that's the about page. Now let's check out the camera interface. So here's the camera application. This is the interface for the rear camera. We get a toggle over here to switch between the primary camera and the secondary wide angle camera. So by default it is in the primary camera and if you want to switch to the 5 megapixel wide angle camera, just click over here and the toggle will change. And it did change right now. Now this is the picture taken with the primary camera and this is the picture taken with the wide angle camera. There's definitely a difference in camera quality but that's to be expected. Now coming back to the interface itself, so this is how it looks like, just like all the previous Samsung phones, you can swipe left or right to switch between these modes. You have the continuous shot, that's burst mode, followed by stickers. Next we have the live focus mode, which is nothing but portrait mode for the red camera. And unlike other Samsung D-series phones, we can't change the background blur effect on this phone. And next we have beauty mode and pro mode and panorama. Now coming to video recording, we can record video in full HD resolution but there is no electronic image stabilization. Now to switch to the front camera, you can either use this button over here or you can swipe up or down on the preview window, just like that. So this is the interface for the front facing camera. We just get two modes. One is the stickers, which simply adds these stickers to your face. And going on next, we have the live focus mode, which is the portrait mode for the front camera. So this is the camera interface and these are some sample pictures taken using the front and rear cameras. Now let's check the speaker loudness. By the way guys, this phone has a speaker on the back so the speaker loudness might not be that impressive. And that was really my initial impression but listening at the audio experience, speaker is definitely pretty loud. It is definitely surprisingly pretty loud. Let's try another video. Hi there guys, I'm Sam and you're 
guys, I'm Nikhil from Greedy Tech and this is the unboxing of the Samsung Galaxy M20 along with a quick hands-on review. So guys, this is the box and this is probably the best Samsung phone ever launched by Samsung. I know that didn't make any sense but this is definitely the best phone Samsung has ever launched in the past few years, at least at this price segment. Now, so guys, speaker on this phone is definitely pretty loud, great for media consumption, ringtones and alarms and Overall, speaker is surprisingly pretty good. Now coming back to the YouTube application, when you do the ping gesture, we can go full screen, but still the area near the notch is completely blacked out. So if you want to have a much more complete immersive experience, this is what you need to do. First go to settings and then once you're in settings, select display settings. Now select full screen apps and from here, enable the toggle for YouTube. Now once you do that, YouTube will restart and the next time you open YouTube, you can do the pin gesture to go full screen. And here's a quick preview. Now we can do the pin gesture to go full screen and even the area near the notch is being utilized. So in this way, we can have a much more immersive experience. We can do the same thing for games, especially games like PUBG or Asphalt 9, which you play in full screen mode. And once you enable the toggle over here, you can play all those games or use any of these applications in the full screen mode, just like YouTube. Now coming back to face and lock feature, these are some settings that are enabled by default. So the first one is face and lock, that's if you want to use face and lock, make sure you enable this toggle. Next is screen on face recognition. So once you enable this toggle, every time your screen lights up, face and lock will try to unlock your phone. Next we have this option for faster recognition and just like the name suggests, it will unlock the phone quickly using facial recognition but it's not that secure. Now if you disable this feature, face and lock will be slightly more secure but it will take a bit more time. Now finally we have bright screen that's if you are in low lighting conditions, screen brightness automatically increases to see your face properly. So these are some settings that you get with face unlock, now let's see how well it works. So this is like well lit conditions and it works. It's not super fast but it works and it's probably taking like a second. I am still able to see the lock screen. Now I am just gonna close my eyes and see if it will work. And even with my eyes closed, it works. Now I'll turn off all the lights and see if it will work once again. So this can be considered as low lighting conditions. It's not complete darkness. And it still works. So guys, face and lock on this phone definitely works. And it's quite usable. Now before I conclude, these are the anti 2 and Geekbench scores. So guys, this is the new Samsung Galaxy M10, the greatest and the best phone so far from Samsung under 10,000 rupees to come with an Infinity V display, bigger battery, good performance, overall a way better phone than what Samsung used to offer earlier. Now if you want my suggestion, I'll say if you really want to buy a Samsung phone under 10,000 rupees, get the Samsung M10 but get the 3GB RAM variant. And if you can spend a little more, definitely get the Samsung Galaxy M20, even the base variant will be way better than this phone. So guys, what do you think about this phone? Is it something you're gonna consider buying over competition like maybe Nokia 5.1 Plus or latest phone from Nokia or Redmi or Realme? Do let me know by commenting below this video and if you are planning to buy this phone, use the link in the description, it always helps the channel and if you want us to make any specific video, tweet out to us with the hashtag AskGreedyTech on Twitter and we will try to make it as soon as possible. I'm Nikhil from Greedy Tech signing off, have a nice day.